Regardless, we're going to get this earthquake off next to our flying Porygon 2. The Terra flying, we're wearing the balloon hat, and we are going to be able to take a double knockout, and our P2 just sits there. <laughs> That's, uh... Yeah, they, they couldn't handle the sauce. They couldn't handle the Nils Terra flying Porygon 2 sauce. You hate to see it. What's up, y'all? Talon here. Today, I'm back with another series of rank battles featuring top teams in the Regulation F metagame. Today, I have a team that was piloted by Nils Dunlop to a first place championship at the European International Championship. I believe it's his first international title. He's won a regional in the US. Um, he's top forward worlds, I believe, losing to, um, I believe, Ralph Dude in the 2018 season. He also went very deep in the 2017 World Championship cut, uh, I believe with Mimikyu Snorlax, possibly both years. But yeah, overall, a very seasoned and incredible player. Glad to see he finally took home a huge national event uh, with a very interesting team. So before we get into that, if you enjoy these videos, um, no, I haven't uploaded one in a long time, but if you enjoy these team breakdowns, the rental codes featured, as well as the um, EV spreads for the Pokemon in the description below in the form of a Pokepace, which you can use on the Pokemon Showdown ladder. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. With all that being said, let's get into a breakdown of this team now. So looking at this team, it very obviously has a Trick Room component. Uh, Trick Room has been something that's been very strong this format, but most of the time it's been for Rigoraf, uh, Ursaluna, Blood Moon. This is just the base Ursaluna form uh, along with Incineroar and Amoongus. Generally very strong Pokemon on Trick Room. We have seen some Trick Room teams, uh, I believe Scott Awafuchi's um, Porygon 2 team, particularly, like, that's the most common one. I know it got top four at a regional recently, but outside of that, Porygon 2 has been kind of quiet in Regulation F, so very cool to see it take home a victory in a very unconventional team. So this team also has Fluttermane and Urshifu rounding out a kind of more balanced offensive uh, mode, so if you don't feel like Trick Room is a good option, your opponent is in prison, or something like that, um, you can just opt for a Firewater, Grass, Corvin, Cineroar, Amoongus, Urshifu, and then, of course, compounded with the ever popular Fluttermane and just play a really principled, balanced game plan uh, instead of the Porygon 2 Ursaluna mode, which is also just very devastating if your opponent isn't ready for it. Really excited to be featuring this team. Uh, if you want to check out the EV spreads, I have them in the Poke Paste in the description below if you want to take that on the Pokemon Showdown ladder. Of course, I have the rental code in the top right of the video if you are interested in trying this team on the Battle Stadium ladder uh, for the remainder of Regulation F. I'm going to be jumping into the ladder now. If you enjoy the videos, please subscribe to the channel and yeah, let's get into it. Okay, that was my first intro in a couple months, and now this is going to be my first battle in a couple months. And we are what looks like uh, playing against another Trick Room team. They have the Iron Crown, Oranguru, Ogre Pond Wellspring Form, Porygon 2, Lurantis, and the Sinistra. So honestly surprised I remembered Iron Crown just off the bat. Haven't really had to think about that Pokemon in a while, but uh, no Psychic Terrain, it appears, from their side. Um, I think Amoogus is really good here with Sludge Bomb against a lot of their Pokemon. Uh, if they set up Trick Room, they're kind of in trouble. I think Substitute Fluttermane's also quite strong against a Trick Room team like this. Um, so it's probably Inner Focus Oranguru. Lorantis is probably contrary, so leading Incineroar might not be as advisable as it looks. I think I'm going to go Urshifu Amoongus. Just keep them honest, make them lead Trick Room, and if they do, I can U-turn out into my Amoongus, and then... I think having, like Ursuluna is tempting for sure, but it's kind of walled out by the Sinistra. The Sinistra could be a problem, so I'm going to bring the Incineroar. I think Sludge Bomb should give me the ammo I need to handle the Lurantis uh, before they start superpowering me out of commission, so yeah. Let's see how rusty we are. It's been a couple months since I battled even off of the channel, um, just took an extended break, uh, got a new car. Got back into the gym, been taking skincare pretty seriously. Overall, a lot of self-care in the last two months, so pardon me for not uploading, but definitely for the best for me personally, and I'm hoping to get an upload streak going and just bring the passion back to the channel that was uh, starting to wane a bit just because of, I don't know, frequency, lack of interest in the format, whatever it could have been, not sure, but kind of feeling motivated again, so. Uh, one thing of note, Cobali, or Iron Crown, I feel like max speed could outspeed me with a substitute. Oh, this I do remember, losing control of my Joy-Cons. For some reason, unable to hit the A button. That's exciting. Oh, 
Okay, so excitingly, uh, apparently I forgot to charge my right Joy-Con, so couldn't hit the A button at all. Very cool. Uh, wanted to switch in Incineroar, but ended up switching the Amoongus. I think that might actually work out better for me here. Um, yeah, they do set up Trick Room, but they can't go for superpowers. They could go for Contrary Leaf Storms, though. That's definitely a concern. Okay, A button is back in action. I feel like the Substitute um, is really baiting in Double Leaf Storm into the Flutter Main slot here. So what I'm going to go for is actually a Sludge Bomb into the Lurantis and a Protect. Usually you'll only see Pollen Puff on Amoongus, so... Um, they might feel a little safer on the Lurantis slot. If they aren't safety goggles, I probably could could have spored the Oranguru here, but I feel like the damage is more important here. Stellar Terra is interesting. Uh, they're still going to retain that weakness to the Sludge Bomb, though. I feel like that's got to be Superpower then. Um, I wonder how that... I imagine that interacts with the... Okay, yeah, we're to it KOing the Lurantis in great shape. And after the Sludge Bomb Poison, we're actually probably going to be able to get it with a Dazzling Gleam if we want to. Uh, actually, not quite after a Citrus Berry, I'd imagine, but still pretty close. Terra Blast on the... Okay, yeah. So very glad I protected there. I thought Leaf Storm was a little more likely, but I think this works out fine. Oh, there was no way that was going to break my... Yeah, why'd they do that? Do they only have fighting moves? It could be like Superpower or Terror Blast. I don't know, weird. Uh, we do have a knockout with the Sludge Bomb. I think Double Leaf Blade could knock me out still. So what I'm gonna go for here is a... Um, not a ton of turns of Trick Room left. I think I'm gonna Moon Blast. Oh, I don't even have Dazzling Gleam, right? Of course, that's the trade-off for the Substitute. I could Spore them. I don't think that's in my best interest, necessarily. Yeah, I think what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna go for is, yeah, the Sludge Bomb into the Lurantis, take that knockout, and they did do a lot of damage with the Psychic on the Amoongus there, but I think that's a trade I'm comfortable with, trading the Amoongus for um, still having my Substitute on the Flutter Main and knocking out the Oranguru, installing a couple turns of Trick Room. Uh, unfortunately, I do lose one more Pokemon with the ability to go for Protect to stall out the Trick Room, but I think that's a fair trade, uh, especially with my Fluttermane still sitting relatively healthy and ready to go for the rest of the battle. So that's three turns of Trick Room gone. Interesting strategy. Um, so they... I, hmm, I'm not really sure what the Lurantis is going for there with the Terra... Terra Stellar. It's quite interesting. So we are seeing the Iron Crown and the uh, Sinistra. Totally fine. I think we'll still under speed. I don't know if we're min speed in Sin. I don't think I went for that. Yeah. I think regardless, that's fine. We should just be able to go for a uh, Terra Ghost could be something, but I doubt it. I think it's safest to go for knockoff. Per, uh, I think the only way this could go badly is if I lose my Incineroar quickly, but I don't think they have a means to do so. Like, they've already Terra'd, so they can't go for a Terra Water. I guess the only fear would be Weakness Policy Focus Blast on this guy. But yeah, we're doing a ton of damage. Could have knocked out with Flare Blitz, and I probably should have gone for that. I was just a little worried that we wouldn't knock them out. Um, regardless, though, if we survive with Incineroar this turn, we will get the chance to knock out the Iron Crown next turn and then go for a uh, Shadow Ball. Yeah, Tachyon Cutter into my Flutter Main, which is why I protected. I might have been able to live that. Um, but if there were choice specs, I might not have been able to. And with Volt Switch on it, I was a little suspect of how everything was going to go. Regardless, though, this does feel pretty wrapped up. We can just knock off the Iron Crown and uh, Shadow Ball. Might knock out the Sinistra, might not, but this battle is definitely in a good spot here. So this battle, I think, shows off a good uh, 
So it shows off how excellent a substitute Pokemon with Protect can be against Trick Room teams just because they have to dedicate so much resources into hitting into your substitute once and then knocking out afterwards. And they also have to predict the turns that you're going to go for Protect or not. So I think that's generally um, a kind of an underrated strategy against Trick Room teams is just having a threatening Pokemon with Substitute and kind of playing the mind game of when you're going to protect and or not, or just protecting it with Fake Out and Rage Powder uh, effe efficiently. So battle ended up going pretty well, even though the A button wigged out on us early in the battle. And yeah, that's going to lock in our first win of this season. Uh, first win in a long time, two months, I think. So still going to be fighting our way up the tier list on the ranked battle ladder, but are the the tier list i don't know what it would be we're still in pokeball tier just to be to be clear about it but yeah not too competitive of a battle there but i do think even even a uh a super strong trick room team like a very meta full of offensive options team with trick room uh doesn't fare that well against a substitute flutter main outside of the hyper voicing um ursulunas which uh probably knocks out after a sub but yeah, against all other Trick Room options, I really do like the sub Flutter main. All right, interesting team for my opponent. They have Mimikyu, very uncommon, Garchomp, uh, Dragonite, which is actually a combination that Lenduel uh, featured on the stream this weekend. I think he ended up going 6-3 uh, with his typical sand stuff with the Garchomp and the Dragonite this time. We have a Midnight, uh, maybe Dusk, I don't know the forms, on the Lycanroc, Spiritomb, and Urshifu. This does feel like a match where... I feel like we could just go straight for Insin Ursaluna and get after it. Like I, I'd love to have Dazzling Gleam on Flutter here, but unfortunately I just don't have it. I guess Amoongus Flutter Main is actually maybe a stronger pick. But I could see this working out. Uh, is Urshifu much of an argument? I think I could truthfully stall most of Trick Room out and get the Flutter Main in. Like, I think they do have tools to stall out my Trick Room if they have Protect on Pokemon. So once that happens, I should just be able to clean up with the Flutter Main pretty easily if they aren't Scarf on any of their Pokemon. This Flutter is a little more tactical um, than like a traditional Booster Energy Dazzle Gleam one would be. You do have to make sure that... Uh, you're actually taking knockouts instead of just chipping everything into Dazzling Gleam range. That is a mistake I almost fell into in the last game where I was like, okay, everything's looking like it should be in range here. Now I just have to close uh, with the Dazzling Gleam, but I actually had Substitute uh, instead of that. So we are raising the attack, so we do have an attack boosted Terra Blast at this point. So I can't fake out that guy, unfortunately. Um, what I can do is they could taunt me which is kind of what I'm worried about. Um, I think I will just go for a... I kind of want to break the Sash on Mimikyu and go for a... Knockoff would be something. I think I'm going to Parting Shot the Dragonite. Yeah, so they're likely to go for a Terra on Dragonite, which is why I didn't Ice Beam into it. Uh, one of Porygon 2's most common moves, and if you aren't an Assault Vest Dragonite, that would just not queue you out, and that is Terra Electric. That could work. Swords Dance, okay. Well, there are plus one on the Mimikyu, and I have wasted an opportunity to go for Trick Room. All right, we're getting interesting, huh? Okay. I think that's fine overall. Because I'm going to break the Mimikyu's uh, Disguise, not Focus Ash, and do a bit of damage into it. Probably knock it into Ursaluna, ri Ursaluna range. And genuinely, I feel like they don't have a knockout into me. Like, uh, Dragonite's not threatening a ton of damage. It usually is not Taunt Swords Dance Mimikyu. This could be the exception. They could be Swords Dance Trick Room or something like that. Have some way to stop my Trick Room, but I don't think it's likely. Leftovers, okay. Yeah, I don't think they have a knockout with plus one play rough, plus anything at minus one with Dragonite, so I think this is a fairly free trick room. 
Uh, no real reason to risk Ursaluna here, even though I probably do have a knockout with Earthquake on both Pokemon. I'd rather just uh, protect and force them to crit my crit or like Dragon Tail or do something crazy to my Porygon 2. Regardless, even if they do knock out my P2, I do get an Incineroar switch in to bring them back down to neutral, or I bring in my Fluttermane and then just go for a Protect Earthquake, which, yeah, I lose my P2 in the process, but pretty unlikely for that to happen. Okay, yeah, very glad I didn't leave the Ursaluna up to... Wow, Interfocus Focus Special Dragonite? That's very weird. Not insane, but definitely one of the weirder things I've seen. So Mimikyu all the way back up to full HP. Is there any reason to preserve my uh, Terra Ghost? I think no. Yeah, I guess the Urshifu could be an issue, but I don't know. I feel like this is definitely the opportunity to go for the Terra Blast Earthquake combination. We do have the plus attack boosting nature, or the plus attack, so... It is going to be hitting on the physical offensive side. I actually don't know which of Mimikyu's defenses are naturally lower. But I do think... Hmm. I wonder if I should be running my P2 slower than the Ursuna. Regardless, we're going to get this Earthquake off next to our Flying Porygon 2. The Terra Flying, we're wearing the Balloon Hat, and we are going to be able to take a double knockout, and our P2 just sits there. <laughs> That's... uh. Yeah, they, they couldn't handle the sauce. They couldn't ha handle the Nils Terraflying Porygon 2 sauce. You hate to see it. Yeah, that just shows the potency of that combination. Yeah, horrible communication error. I'm um, taking the double knockout with such offensive power on the Ursaluna and then just not even having to worry about the damage on our own Pokemon. So normally you need a Cresselia to do that sort of thing, but Nils found another way to run an even bulkier Pokemon while still having that uh, effective ground type immunity. Okay, opponent has a team that looks... I think the same as the one that uh, won the first regional in Regulation F by Alex Underhill. So it is a very physically offensive team. They have the Chen Pao, Entei, Raging Bolt, Fluttermane, uh, Dragonite, and the Ogre Pond. So um, on the bright side, I feel like Ursaluna, this, this team did very well before Incinero was really taking over. So I think we do have some advantage in that regard. Um, have reason to worry about the Raging Bolt because it is safety goggles on this team, so not able to fare it that well. I do think I'm going to go for the Trick Room mode right here. It feels pretty strong. Um, yeah, I think Fluttermane's pretty good too, even though, like, I could go Amoongus, but I feel like Ursaluna is my best bet here. First Luna, obviously, in the Trick Room mode is going to be my best bet. The only question is Fluttermane or Amoongus. I think against these sort of teams, like Fluttermane tends to be very strong against uh, Chen Pao Dragonite, just because if you can force them to lock into a Choice Band at extreme speed, which they often will try and do against a Trick Room team, you can get into really solid positions from that state. If they lead Chen Pao Dragonite, it is a bit of a weird spot where they can... Well, I guess they can't go for Terra Normal Extreme Speed and go for a Terra Ghost to dodge a fake out. So we'll see how it goes. Entei Chen Pao is interesting. I don't remember what this Entei set is, but I feel pretty happy about this lead, honestly. Um, I don't want to hard switch the Insan. I think it might be a Salt Vest on the Entei. We do get attack raise, which is unfortunate, because we would hit a little stronger than the Chen Pao with the other one, but regardless, I think this is going to be a pretty safe Trick Room Parting Shot, unless they have some new techs that weren't on the original team. Regardless, I do think getting a Parting Shot into Entei is nice, bringing it down to minus one that the Inner Focus was able to dodge, and bring it to parity with the Chen Pao. And maybe tempt them not to Terra it in front of the Ursuluna when I bring that in. That could be a value too. They are switching out the Chen Pao, so could have gotten a pretty valuable parting shot into that, but it is going to be the Raging Bolt. That is not an issue at all. So Sacred Fire into the P2, good damage from them. And they are going to lock in the burn, which is a little annoying because my Terra Blast, I think, is based on that right now. Uh, parting shot into the into that would have been pretty valuable, actually. Okay. 
So I don't think a facade is going to knock out their Raging Bolt. I... Yeah, just automatic going to the, the Ursa here. And there is the Trick Room. So I could Earthquake knock out the... I feel like what's going to happen here is they're going to go for a... Terra on the Raging Bolt. Offensively, I am burned on both of my Pokemon here. I feel like preserving P2, like Ice Beam is not going to do a lot if they Terra. I think they're Terra Fairy generally on this sort of team. Um, yeah, if that hadn't burned, I maybe could have gotten a knockout with the Facade, but now it's looking pretty unlikely. I think I want to protect switch to Incineroar. I don't think there's a lot of damage coming Porygon 2's way this turn, and I feel like a Draco Meteor into my Ursaluna could be pretty annoying. I guess I'm used to... Um, I tend to be... I've seen a lot more Blood Moon Ursaluna in the past couple months than the than this one, so I'm used, I have forgotten that this one actually has pretty solid special defense, so... Oh, interesting. Taunt. Huh. They expected Swords Dance or something, I guess, but I had a knockout there. Which is interesting. Um, weird. I do feel like we just have a knockout with Facade into this guy. Could be wrong. Surely Facade knocks it out, right? They didn't tear that turn, though. They switch in Dragonite. I'm fine with it. I think I'm going to go Headlong Rush and slow play this a bit. Or fast play this turn, I guess. But yeah, they didn't attack. Or they didn't uh, Terra with their Entei, which is fine. I'm going for the Headlong Rush just because I think it's Assault Vest. And if it has enough bulk to lift Facade, I really don't want to take a Stomping Tantrum or anything this turn. Regardless, we are going to get a little bit of damage into that Raging Bolt and see if they are Leftovers. I don't think they were Taunt originally on this team. I think it was Thunderbolt, Thunderclap. And yeah, no leftovers, so probably still safety goggles. Uh, they are wisely preserving their terrestrialization, which is annoying for sure. I have enough turns of Trick Room left to where I feel confident going for a... Oops, not that. I'm going to switch into P2 and slow play this, like I said, and go for a parting shot into... Um, hmm. I guess Flare Blitz is pretty potent as well. I don't think a Sacred Sword is going to knock me out. I feel like there's a legitimate argument to go for a Flare Blitz into the Chen Pao instead. Uh, yeah. Weird spot. I think the Raging Bolt isn't really a threat to my Fluttermane, and... At this point, I feel like Fluttermane could be a better win condition than Ursaluna once Trick Room ends. Like, uh, if I can bait a Terra from any of their Pokemon, I'll just 1v1 the... We do get the special attack raise this time, which is valuable. They do switch that out. Okay. So the parting shot into the Chen Pao is definitely looking good. They have the Ogre Pawn, so... Overall, yeah, Flare Blitz maybe would have been better there, but I think overall not the end of the world. I think I can provide a lot of pressure going into um, Ursa Luna. Like, Fluttermane would be fine once Trick Room ends, but I don't want to have to switch in and out and lose my booster energy, essentially. So I'm going to go for the non Camille option, the Ursa Luna. Yep, there is a Sacred Sword. Glad I parting shot in that. And now I should have a fairly free Recover Facade? Or Facade... Um, I think this is a free recover switch. So this is really one of the, an example of how this team can function on such a high level. You have a Pokemon as bulky as Fluttermane uh, and Ursaluna, so you can switch those out in a fair bit, even, if, even as they're taking chip throughout the battle and still pose a threat to either do a ton of damage with the Ursaluna instantly um, with the Guts Flame Orb option, or just recover and then go for multiple Trick Rooms with the uh, P2. So they're going to follow me, which is interesting. I don't really... I think they did just have a double protect there pretty free, but now their Chen Pao is doing very pitiful damage, and they are 
yeah, Ice Spinner, that's not going to work, so. I think this is just the team functioning how it's meant to do. The P2 Incineroar or Saluna mode can be really, really annoying, especially when you have an all-physical team like this. I think at this point, Trick Room is a really solid option. Fake Out feels pretty free into the Ogre Pond. I am Citrus Berry on the... Um, on this guy. Um, I, my only concern is the, like, Terra Water with Sword of Ruin might be a knockout, honestly. And I don't want to just give that away, so I'm going to go for a fake out, even though I think a switch uh, could happen here. I do think I am liable to lose my, um... My Incineroar like instantly if I don't go for a fake out here. So they do go for the Terra on the Chen Pao, which I think is kind of a mistake. I'm um, just fake outing the Ogre Pond here. Should work out very well for me. Yeah, that's permanent chip. And now we have a Terra. Yeah, they don't get the crit there. And now a Terra flying Terra Blast is just going to knock out the Ogre Pond here. And we do have the special uh, special attack boost, so that is very favorable for us. I wonder if I even have to go for the Terra. I don't think I do just yet. I think I'm perfectly fine going for a... Um, I don't really have to Parting Shot you, do I? No, I don't think so. I think I can just go for a Knock Off Terra Blast here. Slow play this. Uh, they don't go for Protect at all. I think that has been a mistake in their game plan, is giving me too many free turns of Trick Room when they could just be attacking, but... Yeah, I don't go for an attack here. I kind of estimated based on the special attack boost and me being a quiet P2 that I should just get the knockout anyways, given they didn't go for a Terra. Um, so I don't open myself up to the susceptibility of like getting Ice Spinner crit or Parting Shot and then getting um, like going for a Parting Shot onto either Pokemon and then getting crit on a Sacred Sword Ivy Cudgel switch in. It does have a very high crit chance, the 20th crit chance on Ivy Cudgel. So I think... That is one thing to recognize in this sort of th this sort of team is that yes, it's extremely fun uh, to just cycle your Pokemon, your opposing Pokemon, your opponent's Pokemon all the way down to minus three if I go for a parting shot, and then another Intimidate bring it down to minus four. But uh, critical hits happen the longer a battle goes on, so something something to be cognizant of and always uh, trying to avoid. So I think damage here is very high value. Um, I could double and knock out the Chen Pao uh, or the Raging Bolt, I feel like, this turn. But I do think just bringing everything in range of the Ursaluna should close this game out, since I have enough turns of Trick Room left. I feel like them ter terrestrializing their Raging Bolt earlier in the battle might have been the angle they needed to go for. Just all these physical Pokemon were way too susceptible to the Incineroar, and even though I did kind of protect my Ursaluna from that possibility, it was definitely um, something that still could have been a risk. Like do them doing that much damage and then angling for a Sucker Punch or an Extreme Speed later in the game to finish it off after all the burn chip could have been good for them. Regardless though, um, with this many turns of Trick Room left, I do feel pretty confident in how this game can go. Two more turns of Trick Room. I guess now it's just weighing whether I want to go for a Terra Flying or not. I don't think that's necessary. I think Recover... Recover covers my bases just fine, and then I can Facade into you. And yeah, they go for Thunderclap. Predicting... Yeah, predicting P2 to attack, I guess, trying to finish it off, but they would have needed the crit to knock me out, and I'm just playing this as safe as I can. Um, they would have needed to crit Ice Spinner, my Ursaluna here, and protect, I think. But even if they do that, my P2 gets back out of range for pretty much any chance of a knockout without a another crit. And then Fluttermane should handle the Chen Pao. Like, their only way to win this was a lot of crits, and even then I feel like going for a recover on P2, I do have ways to, um, to stall it out. So yep, now we just go for the final headlong rush into their Chen Pao, and they do cancel out, so... Yeah, I think really good representation of how this team can function against more balance-oriented teams is just pivot around your extremely bulky Pokemon, 
Uh, if you don't want Fluttermane, you can bring a Mungus to make your Trick Room mode even more sound. Or on the turns that uh, Trick Room ends, you can have Fluttermane or Urshifu just to punch holes in your opponent's team as they've been shuffling around your Trick Room mode. So really happy we got a battle like that in against a really competent uh, team composition. And yeah, really happy with that battle. Okay, my opponent has the team that I believe won a European regional championships, this Hail or a Snow team with the Choice Specs Articuno, Ninetales, Arcanine, Ogre Pond, Landorus Incarnate, and Raging Bolt. So lots of variations on the sets they could be running or like individual parts of the sets. It's largely going to be the same Choice Specs, Blizzard stuff, but they could be like Encore, Ninetales, a whole bunch of options they could be there. Um, so what are we going to do about that? Auroraville is just so annoying to deal with, honestly. Uh, tch -tch -tch. so much so much pressure truly I think I want to force them to go for blizzards if I can Fluttermane seems strong and I guess Amoongus could be cool defensively against some of their Pokemon but I'm not sure this is a, a game I'm not entirely sure how to cover hmm because I can, I feel like they can just intimidate me down on the side of the, like they can go Aurora Veil, Intimidate, and then suddenly my Ursula's damage isn't too impressive. And if they have a Blizzard Pokemon on the field um, at any point, I just have to go for a Terra because I can't knock them out, which is usually your best uh, defensive option on the Ursula is actually just offense, but I don't think that plays here so well. So I do have Urs the Urshifu, which is kind of dissuading a blizzard necessarily turn one uh, but definitely not guaranteeing it uh, i think i'm just gonna get after the articuno though with a terra fairy moonblast right off the bat yep so we are seeing the snow warning activate before my booster energy which is quite bad actually I think that's how it works. Like, I feel like the abilities always activate first, but I'm not certain of that. That's annoying, but it is what it is. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go right after it with the Moonblast. I am liable to take a lot of damage this turn, but if I don't take a knockout, I think I'm in trouble. They aren't going for a Terra on Articuno, which could be a mistake on their part, but at the same time, it does worry me. Oh, actually, no, they. Almost certainly are, but of course my Fluttermane's going to move first. Yeah, I don't think I'll get a knockout here if the speed tiers uh, shake out the way I expect. Oh, I should have close combated, actually. For them to go for a Terra Ice Blizzard, they have to go for lose their flying type. So I could have gone for close combat, which would have been a better play, I think. And maybe brought them in range of a knockout, but yeah, just didn't think to do it. And you can see the defense boost persisting throughout the... Yeah, that sh totally should have been close combat. I would have gotten almost certainly a knockout, actually. Oh, we do outspeed. So booster energy does activate after. Snow warning, good to know. We do take a knockout. That's actually pretty incredible. That's very, very valuable. Um, so we knock out their Terra turn one in exchange for ours, but... Most likely, they're just going to go for an Icy Wind or an Aurora Veil. Yeah, Aurora Veil. I'm totally fine with that. Um, yeah, they don't have option optionality to go for a Terrastalization anymore, which is a huge, um, huge complication factor against a team like this when you have so many Pokemon that are otherwise kind of easy to handle. I think Protect Switch to Incineroar is quite handy here. Yeah, taking that knockout turn one was so essential. That's why we run a bit a bit more speed on this Fluttermane. We could have been speed time, but we are running a bit more than um, a Pokemon trying to outspeed a Landorus Incarnate max speed would be. We're 171, so if the Ninetales is saying, okay, we'll just outspeed the Landorus's and knock them out with Blizzard, we are outspeeding that by one point. So Incineroar comes in here trying to take a Horn Leech, Freeze Dry, Blizzard, Moonblast, whatever comes out into their Urshifu slot. And we are going for Protect to set up for a substitute next turn. So there is the spiky shield, which makes our next turn way easier. I don't think a blizzard has a chance to knock out our flutter main, uh, our flutter main substitute. I doubt it. 
I imagine they're pretty bulky and not a lot of offense. So we're gonna go for fake out into the Ogre Pawn and sub. And if we do, okay, yeah, we're doing a bit of damage, which could prove to be valuable in the end game. We'll see. But yeah, we're taking out a pretty big sub here. 41 HP, I imagine I survived the blizzard, but I'm not certain about it. Okay, yeah, that's me not knowing my calcs, but that's definitely a pretty huge missed opportunity to go for a Moonblast, which we... Uh, yeah, that's bad. Okay. No, no if, ands, or buts about it. That's not good. I think we should live an Ivy Cudgel, though. So we just have to chip this guy down a little bit. And who could they have in the back? Um, I don't love taking a blizzard on Among Us, but I think it might be necessary. Maybe we should have gone for Parting Shot here, but... Yeah, they are still a slower Ogre Pond, which is interesting. They sh we should be chipping them into range for a U-turn at this point. They're going to Cudgel into the Incineroar, so yeah, we should have switched out into the Amoongus. But given we have the Citrus Berry, uh, I feel reasonably happy about this. Um, and we do also cover a Blizzard Freeze onto Incineroar. Would this play a bit better than Parting Shot? Because Flare Blitz is an automatic thaw. So yeah, that's really good. Yeah, that is a 2 at KO. That's super valuable. And we will be living the next hit from them. They would need to get a crit. They need to freeze my. Um, yeah, they protect. They spiky shield the ogre pond, but they do need to get a freeze or some other uh, option from the nine tails to knock out my flutter main at this point. Yep, there is the moon blast, so they do knock out my incineroar. Good play there, but it kind of just stalls the inevitable in my opinion. Snow goes down, and we can just go into our Urshifu, and I think clear it out with a Moonblast. Um, one thing to be aware of is the possibility of a Arcanine in the back going for Intimidate, so I want to be wary of that. The only question is who it would switch into. Um, hmm. Yeah, that could make things interesting, actually. Okay. Um, I kind of want to substitute. I'm not sure if that's wise, though. I think I'm going to go for just Moonblast U-Turn. Maybe it should have been Shadow Ball into the Ninetales. I'm not sure. Yeah, they are switching something out. But it is the Ogre Pond, so I think we do call this turn at least somewhat right. Oh, it is a Landorus, so yeah, we, we should be covered, actually. That covered close combat and U-turn very well, but I think we do still get this knockout onto the Ninetales, and Amoongus seems pretty primed to close this out, given they'd have to be Psychic on the Lando to beat me. Uh beat me fast enough for me not to beat their Ogre Pond, I think. Because now my play gets pretty simple with Substitute, because I can go for... Um, like, they have to knock out my... They have to double into my Fluttermane to knock it out, and... Uh, should I go for Protect here? I don't know. They basically need to two-hit KO my... Amoongus to not let the Ogre Pond go down. But they also... Like, they really need to be taking knockouts very quickly here. But if I go for a substitute, I'm either saying, okay, you can take my Amoongus, but you give me substitute, or you can knock out my substitute and you gain no ground on Amoongus, so... Yep, they, there is the substitute, or the... Um, there is that play. But now what I can do is... I guess I could protect this turn. I don't know. Force them to go for a double protect. Is there any reason to do that? Yeah, definitely. 
So we're about to stall out Aurora Veil at this point, which is really high value. Uh, they need to get a double protect or a crit earth power to deal with my Amoongus at this point, but they don't get that. They need to have Psychic here, which they might not have. Yep, there is a Sludge Bomb, so maybe could have played this turn, played this a little more optimally, but I'm trying to do coverage for like random stuff like Psychic uh, or Sand Sandseer Storm, I think, would maybe be a way for them to win if they knock out Fluttermane. And I don't knock them out with Moonblast because of Aurora Veil, so with just stalling that last turn out, I feel like Substitute definitely gives you a lot of options in this sort of endgame, and we should just have this with Moonblast Spore. But yeah, good game to them, but I do feel like um, that first turn, they just committed very hard to the, um, I guess, to their Articuno. I think I should have gone for a close combat in the case where I'm not getting they disconnect for some reason. Don't want to see the last animation, I suppose. But I do think that close combat was a little better for me just because of all the potential switch-ins they have. Like I handle Ogre Pond better than if I Surging Strike, I handle... Arcanine, I handle, I guess not Raging Bolt, but I'm still covering that with Moonblast, so I think that was a misplay on my first turn, but outside of that, I feel pretty good about how that game went. Uh, I'm not sure this team has a ton of game into, or like a, a ton of consistent game into Snow. That feels like it could be a kind of a problem matchup, but we were able to solve it in this case and go a little aggressive and close it out uh, turn one, just dealing with their most offensive options. So that is going to do it for a battle today featuring Nils Dunlop's very cool P2 Ursaluna team that he was able to take first place in their European International Championships with. If you want to use the team for yourself, I have the Pokepaste with the EV spreads for use on Pokemon Showdown, as well as the uh, rental team for use on Battle Stadium in the top right of the video, as well as on the, in the team description below. Follow him on Twitter. With all that being said, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please subscribe if you did, and peace y'all.